And one of the parts of your book that I found most interesting was the idea of the trowels for hire, the people who actually are archaeologists who go about mm -hmm. uh, to the sites that are being developed, development stops, which yes. is a good thing, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, the owners of the land are really trying to find out, are there Mm -hmm. um, important uh, finds here that we have to be sure to skirt around mm -hmm. or excavate beforehand. So are there a lot of that kind of work being done? Well, that's supposed to happen on the front end. You're supposed mm -hmm. to get you're supposed to get that with your environmental survey mm -hmm. anywhere that development is happening, and certainly and legally anywhere where federal monies are involved. Mm -hmm. And so, surprisingly, in the book, this was this stunned me. Some of the most interesting archaeology happening now is being done as a sideline of the U.S. Army, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And they are, what they have to do by law is make sure before they set up an artillery range or, you know, throw up new, new dorms for soldiers, they have to make sure that they're not disturbing any archaeological remains. And so they have archaeologists on staff who find out, I'm sorry, this is a Native American a very sacred Native American site, as it turns out. You can't put dormitories here. What are you going to do with it? We're going to preserve it, and mm -hmm. we're going to make it accessible to Native Americans. Now, that's a, the, the U.S. Army is doing this. This is fascinating, mm -hmm. right? The reality is more usually that it is owned by a developer, a private mm -hmm. landowner, who has ambitions for it that do not include roping it off and making a nice little visitor center mm -hmm. uh, for the occasional tourist uh, or third grade mm -hmm. visiting class. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens, in, and frequently what happens, is the law is um, slid past and, or ignored.